morning, people. I'm trying to get my phone to sit up in a half dead geranium. Oh, I'll tell you what, I sort of like this time change for the morning time. Put on my shirt. Um, no, if you go to bed at the old time, so last night I went to bed at nine, right? Because I usually end up asleep at like 10. And then you get to sleep an extra hour in the morning. Am I crazy? Y'all don't care. Well, I'm just telling you, it's good for me. And I get Amos to bed at six. I know, it's a little early. This lighter. Hello, Elizabeth and Sarah. I've got to quit Spokey. What date am I going to pick? It's going to have to be. I think in two weeks. Hi, Dinah. So, y'all. Hey, Nicole. I was reading all this new stuff. It I'm not a. Hi, Sheila. Kristen. I'm not a news. Like, that's not my job, right? But I like news. So I go between like writing about just my shit after the holidays. It's a good idea. Maybe after Thanksgiving. And then writing about, you know, Coastal Prep in Wilmington or writing about, anyway, a hundred different things. Which is fine. Hey, Ashley. So, and Carmen. So, pick today. Oh, so that Today Show thing, I mean, y'all don't go counting your chickens before they hatched. You have to drive it to work. Oh, I would die. Absolutely die. Or maybe not. Hi, Laura. And, oh, y'all are also perky. Mm. So, so cute with these cigarettes, Kitty would smoke them. So there are all these like, oh, 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 the Today Show. So yes, I got this Instagram message from a follower and she had said a couple weeks ago and she said, are you really serious about wanting to do something with the Today Show? And other than moving to New York, I was like, yes. I mean, I can't worry about paltry details. Yes, I am. I really would like to do something. You know, this would be awesome. So she was like, well, I'm going to send your page and da, 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 da to my sister. Pick today to quit smoking. And it made me too grumpy this week. My husband has a big week. He's informed me. So I have to be totally self-sufficient. So anyway. Uh, now you've, Susan, you've got me all in a stir. Oh, oh, oh. So yesterday she sends me a message and says, um, I sent your stuff to my sister. She really liked it. She shared it with her boss who's a producer at NBC, and she loved it. And she said, like, their most successful things of when they've had this Southern cook come on, not Vivian Howard, but another Southern cook. And they want to send me an email. So I gave it to them. Hey, Lily. Oh, good. Jennifer's going to toy me. Hi, Cassandra. So anyway, we'll see. I just don't have time to do that, or I don't make time to do that. Good morning, and this is so exciting. Stop on New Year's Day. Oh, that sounds even better. Um, so anyway, it is sort of exciting. Even if nothing comes of it, I'm making some progress, right? Um, okay, so news. Let's talk about some news stories. Can we, please, just for a minute, Stephanie? Good morning. Um, okay, we have, f have about four one is, and I'm going to write about it this morning, even though I need to get ready for my talk. I have to write about one, I could, but I can only choose one because I don't have time. So one in Leyland, North Carolina, Leland, North Carolina, there's this charter school. It's a for-profit charter school. It's owned by somebody with the name Bacon. And girls make them produce in North Carolina. I know. Wouldn't that be good? Girls are not allowed to wear shorts or pants. They have to wear skirts. This is not a private school, people. This is a public school, a for-profit charter school. Hello. So she went to the ACLU, which 
that's probably not really my gig, but anyway. And they filed a court suit and they're waiting to hear what they're gonna say, saying um, Title I, that's discrimination. And I have to tell you, I think it is discrimination. How in the hell are you supposed to, Blair would sooner die before she wore a skirt to school. Like sometimes I've made her wear a dress, like for awards day, but now we just get like fancy pant outfits. I mean, do y'all not think that's, am I crazy? But I think that's crazy. How are you supposed to be on the monkey bars or swing or do anything? Golly. So that's one news story. Another news story is this, <laughs> this poor teacher from North Carolina said, okay, our superintendent sent us all this letter that we shouldn't be political. Okay, fine, don't be political. And they're doing this stop the bleed training because evidently like, 60% well they didn't tell them Nicole that they weren't that they had to wear skirts until um, it was like right when the school opened until the orientation or whatever so anyway well I'm off it's fine if you want to make people wear uniforms I think that's fine but boys and girls I mean you know there's all this girl stuff like your fingers have to touch your pants and you can't wear spaghetti strings oh but the owner let me just go by that said, and they didn't use his defense in the, um, someone used doxing in one of my Facebook groups. Oh my gosh. Um, the owner said that they put this policy in place the day after Columbine. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? That just tells you what North Carolina schools think about school safety. Maybe Kim Martin should go visit them and talk about how wearing skirts like an atmosphere of girls dressed in skirts and then like people have to say ma'am and sir and boys have to open doors for girls. I mean, I think those are nice things, but to make, anyway, I think making somebody say ma'am is sort of a weird thing. I mean, it's fine. I do it at my house. Columbine, I know, like that it was a safety because some of the victims were girls is what he said. I mean, you can't make this shit up. And that bizarre. And then this other school in North Carolina, this is less provocative, but I think this makes for an interesting conversation. They're doing stop the bleed training. So that's in Las Vegas, like 60% of the people that died wouldn't have died if somebody had had stop the bleed training, though people were probably running for their lives, right? When that shooting happened. So the teachers at the school are all getting stop the bleed training. But the school is also having an auction and auctioning off AR-15s in a raffle. Does that seem weird to y'all? It's for the shooting team, which I mean, I don't mind a shooting team. But in this day and age, auction off an AR-15? What do y'all think? Oh, Lori says, say what? I know. Does it seem odd? Well, that's another story. Um, nothing makes sense anymore. You heard me, Elizabeth. Schools and guns don't care together. Well, I really don't mind a shooting team. Truly. But I don't think I would auction off an A or a 15. Moving on to the next story. The next story happened in Durham on Friday night, and I do want to write about this one too, but again, I have to choose one, and I think I'm have to, having to go with the skirt. This story, this is why I'm telling y'all, so then I'll like get it out so other people can say to me, yes, this is crazy. Where's this raffle in Texas? No, it's in North Carolina. Um, somebody sent me a message about Beverly Perdue. Lord help us, I heard she was working with Betsy DeVos. Um, DeVos, whatever it is. So, remember I live downtown, all sorts of noises you hear from my parking lot next door. Now, this story is from Durham at, a high, at Jordan High School. And a team played them, I can't remember the team that played them, and they lost, which is fine. And the mother wrote this letter to the superintendent or principal of the high school, both maybe. And she said um, her son, who was goalie, 
being goalie and the people in the stands from Jordan High School, students, parents, I don't know. And let me just say as an aside, I've noticed having a middle school soccer player, some parents really act bad at these games, I'm telling you. We had one mother that was yelling, push them down, push them down. And I was like, what the hell? Who yells that? One, our team hadn't pushed anybody down on purpose. And even if they had, I still would not yell to be violent to my team. And then another team, when we were in Gates County, strange where my husband works, these people, um, this woman said, if I had some gas, I would light their bus on fire. Now, because of my knowledge of threat assessment and risk assessment, I would assume that, yes, that was a threat, but it wasn't really real. That woman went going to go get gas and light the bus on fire. But still, oh, write about this one, Stephanie. I know, I think I'm going to have to. Maybe I have to write about this one first. So the student is a goalkeeper, and people are yelling, where's your dad? Well, his dad had died of colon cancer uh, three years before. Did y'all hear that? write about this story. Okay, I'll write about this one for y'all. I'll wait on the skirt one. Where's your dad? And then another player whose father um, committed suicide and there he had been accused of embezzlement. The students yelled, where's the money? I mean, isn't that awful? And the poor brother of the goalkeeper was like, he was crying and was be, anyway, it was just terrible, terrible. And so the administration issued a statement I saw last night saying, we're looking into this. We do not abide by this. Um, this is not okay. So I'll be curious to see what they do about it. So anyway, sorry, that's a lot of negative news this morning. Did adults tell them to do this? I'm not sure if it were, was adults doing it themselves. I would hope it wasn't, but nothing surprises me. How did they know these things? Well, they went on social media to look at the players. They should have to forfeit the game. That would be a good idea. But you can't really blame the players for the people in the stands, right? But I do think there has to be some sort of something where somebody is in charge of the people in the stands like last time when i said these people were yelling they said well you should have gone to get there has to be like an athletic staff person on site at the games to handle these kind of things so where was that person but they have to be told that it's happening like the whole push them down thing which is nothing compared to that it's just me anyway yeah the teens looked on facebook So there you go. Mm. Good morning, Kim and Jitty. So that's your news for today. Jordan versus Paige. Yes, that's right. And Paige lost, right, Amanda? Mm. Hey, Martha. So do I have any positive news? Let me think. Positive news. News, news. Oh, oh no, this is a positive. But I'm just going to tell you this because it is horrific. Have you heard of this thing called free birthing? It's actually a thing. Sorry, my hair is terrible. Um, free birthing had a someone in administration in the student section. Perfect, Kelly. That's exactly what they should do. So, free birthing is when this is different from home birth. When you have a home birth, you have a midwife and you go for prenatal checkups. You do all the things, you just have the baby at home. It's fine. I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. Free birthing is when you don't go to the doctor, you don't get tested for strep B, diabetes, you don't have a midwife, you ain't got nothing. You just have the baby because you're a warrior mother. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Mm. So this woman has a baby 
and she's been in labor for seven days. Her water broke three days in. Foul odor of water. Clearly, meconium was in there. And she didn't go to the doctor. She finally went to the doctor on day six or seven when the pain was so bad. And she delivered a baby that didn't live. And she had a terrible urinary tract infection. And um, she also carried strep. So when you carry strep, you've got to be treated for antibiotics because it can be fatal to the baby. Now, free birthers, I'm just calling them that, think that it is their right, no matter what, to choose what to do when it comes to their body. Now, I don't need to get into a conversation about women's bodies, but I'll be damned if that baby doesn't have a right to live. But nobody's ever charged with this crap. And then they go online to these free birth people who are like, don't go to the doctor, hospitals are terrible. There's a reason that like our mortality rate is much lower than it ever was before. I mean, people die when they have babies. I'm sure little Thomas wouldn't have lived. And Amos and I would have died at Amos's. I mean, I had a C-section with Amos and I didn't want to. But you know what? Too bad. Like, we want people to live. Anyway. So this mother has taken no, no, maybe it's just a way to cope. Jerdy Mood, I think is the name of the baby. No responsibility that she had anything to do with this at all. Never sought medical treatment. I just can't see that that's not like having one of my kids be terribly, terribly sick and not taking them to the doctor as they're dying. Anyway. I, I don't, me don't like that. Free birthers. And there's some woman who makes money off the free birthing movement. She has shut down her Facebook page. Where is your rational thought? I have twins and no one have made it from the hospital. Come on, people. Yeah. So I'm just full of a lot of inflammatory stories this morning. A desperate plea for attention. I have no idea. So y'all still think I should write about the football story and save the free birther and the something else? That skirt story, ugh, makes me so mad. Well, do we have anything else positive? Hmm. I don't. I'm gonna get work done today. A lady delivered a baby in the back seat of the car. Yes, that happens. No skirts. You want me to write that story, Kristen? Stephanie wants me to write the other one. Yes, why are y'all saying yes? Which story? You have to tell me. Soccer story. Oh, Seth, the soccer story. All right. Um, I have to get ready for this uh, staff training thing I'm doing on Monday. The game. Okay, y'all are winning. And I'm supposed to write about how you can ignite change in your classroom. What does that even mean? I'll write about free birthing. I'll write about free birthing. I'm going to write about them all this week, I hope. But I think I'll start with the, the soccer. <sighs> ignite change. How do I write ignite change? I don't know why I agreed to do these things. I get paid. That's probably mainly why. And I do love teachers. But I like when I get to do my own topic. Like for Junior League and for Salem, I can get those done. They're like why you should be truthful in a world that's not, you know? What if I smoked during the talk? That would really go over well. Volunteering in the classroom. What's that? Who's volunteering? I should be volunteering. We did see Blair's teacher last night at the grocery store. Change what? I don't know. These are the things I don't know. Sounds like a grad school assignment. I'm gonna call the lady this morning. Hmm. 
I want her to think I hadn't started working on it yet, though. <laughs> I think I'm just going to write something, and I'll send it to her and see if she likes it. And I'll, like, throw those keywords in there. You could smoke and have a drink like that comedian. Ooh, ooh, maybe I should be a comedian. I need to put clothes away. Blah, 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 blah. It didn't make very much progress. Now i got to go mail a bunch of crap back to Bowdoin and Land's Inn, though, because we ordered Russell 18 pairs of pants to discover that he has an 18 husky size pants. I think it's neat you can still have cookies in the classroom. You're not allowed to have cookies? What? I, read. I gotta finish your comment. Heidi, let's see. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, Heidi, you've gone. We're not allowed at my school for birthdays. What? Well, we're not allowed to make the cookies. You have to buy them, but you can have them. Well, Blair talked her teacher into buying cookies for the new student coming today. And that was really nice. Like they've been talking about the girl that's coming and um, they don't know her name. And Blair and I were talking about how you can make somebody feel welcome when they're new at your school because how nervous you would be, you know, it's nerve wracking. I signed some people up for camp. I got to mail those things off yet today too. Camp Trinity, which is our like Episcopal church camp. My kids love it. They're all three going to that. And I don't know what else they're going to do. We better come up with something. I'm sure as hell not going to watch people play Fortnite all, all summer. What will you be in Rocky Mount? Ooh. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be in Rocky Mount. Not in a while. For a while. Oh, oh, oh. I am going to be there. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. How to make the classroom more inclusive. Oh. Well, that's a good idea. I could do that. Oh, yeah, I could talk about Amos more. Okay. Thank you, Ramona. And let me just say that I love the name Ramona because Ramona Quimby was, like, my favorite character in all books. Um, yeah, I'll be at Rocky Mount tomorrow. I'm working the polls. So my nose. From 5 to 7. Oh, sorry, y'all. What is that? It's so weird. Oh, I don't know. Stop. That's gone now. Um, and I have to take Amos with me. And I tried to get my friend Meg last night to babysit, but she can't. So now I'm going to call my friend Meredith today and see if she'll let him come. Because I could take him to the polls, but I just don't think that'll be very useful. Y'all? Um, and I want to support my friend Bruce. Because that's what friends do for each other. And what else? 12 different schools that should say what? Oh, I have no idea. We're up to 400 and we might have 405 supporters. Today, I start this thing, Facebook, my Ashley Facebook person said that I'm gonna do this goal. And my goal is a thousand supporters by the end of December. And when I said to Ashley, you know, I think I'm going to shoot for a thousand. What do you think? And she was like, I think that's too many. Nothing like encouraging me to start get competitive. I can get a thousand people. If all y'all convinced one friend to support me and to join, I would be at 810. See? Easy peasy, chicken squeezy. Um, ugh, last game tonight. No, you said the game was tomorrow night. Ah, Jenny joined this morning. Good welcome, Jenny. We're so fun. Is today the 7th, November 7th, or the 6th? Jenny, this is the kind of thing. You're just there to, to answer my questions. I went to 12 different schools in 13 years. Oh, gosh, Jennifer. That sounds hard. Um... It would be useful to have Amos there for those running that don't fully support special needs classrooms. Yes, Amos could be useful with all sorts of things. Fifth. Today's the fifth. It is? Are y'all sure? Fifth, sixth, seventh. I thought she said the game was on the seventh. I'm losing my mind. Oh, you're right. Okay. You can get a thousand. Debbie, thank you. So y'all all go convince somebody to sign up. I think I signed up by accident last night. Why in the hell would I sign up to see myself? 
I didn't mean to. Somebody had said they were having trouble signing up. So I was like, well, I'm going to practice. So I clicked be a supporter. And it was like, you're a supporter. Well, I never even had to enter in my, like, now it's raining, credit card information. Does Facebook just have my credit card information? Did y'all see the rain? I'm going to have to go inside. A son turned 19 today. Oh, yeah. Well, then you're sure. That's a big birthday. Well, anyway, I'll figure that out. I'm probably wrong. Shocker. Since I normally am wrong. Anyway. Um, I'm going to write about my life. The Fifty Shades of What the Hell. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. Oh, that's so clever. That is clever. Clever, clever, clever. No, I'm working the poles in Rocky Mount, but I don't know what poles there are. And I don't want to get there too early because I don't want to have to get Amos out of school too early. So I think I'll pick him up at um, a little tiny bit early, maybe at three. And then we'll go. Are you sitting in the rain? Uh, yes, yes I am. I'm sitting in the rain because... What's going on with my drink? Rain doesn't bother me too bad. Hi, Sarah. Though now it's raining a little harder. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to go inside then. Um, I have to be at UNC on the 8th for pre-op. No fun at all. The 8th. Oh, I'll be at Duke Raleigh, not UNC. I hope that goes well. Oh, and I need to get my hair done. And I think it was supposed to get done on Tuesday. Clearly, it needs it. And I can't, because Amos will have a... Why can't I? Oh, no, I couldn't morning. Wednesday. A tragic comedy. That would be your book, A Tragic Comedy. That actually is quite perfect. I, I want I have this book, and I want to write it. But what the hell am I supposed to do that? I just can't do all these things. I need to exercise? Again, when am I going to do that? Heaven forbid I do that in the morning. Or all day when my kids are at school. No, that would be too sensible. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would. Um, okay, I'm going to go write the story. Y'all win. Never say I didn't do anything for you. The soccer story. And you're going to each sign up a friend for my supporters. And then we're going to, y'all picked the Tales of an Educated Debutante mess. We're going to send three packages out for three supporters. And you might get one. You never know. And then I'm going to do somebody's voicemail. Only if you really want that. Um, what else? Hmm. Hmm. I wanted to have lunch with people last week in Raleigh, but the board meeting went on so long. So I couldn't. Carry on, people. We'll see you. Um, I doubt tonight in the morning if not tonight dinner time I'm gonna go take a frozen pork tenderloin out and cook that did you decide what the packages will be no but I'm up for suggestions I am gonna get some gear made like a t-shirt and I'm gonna get some hats made and I'm gonna let my supporters buy them first um, I might give you a little 10% discount since y'all are already here. Please do a story about the free birthing. I will. Oh, do some videos with Vivian Howard. Yes, I will. We've done a video, Vivian Howard video. I don't know where she is this week. I haven't talked to her in a week. Will there be a hat in the packages? Yes, there will. But I need a good logo. I think somebody last week were like, I have all these logos. I was thinking of Toad, T-O-A-E-D, Tales of an Educated Debutante. Do y'all like that or do you think that's kind of dorky? A lighter. <laughs> oh, Amanda, you funny. Um, yeah, t-shirts, hat, maybe a koozie, a koozie, a wine sippy cup. That's a good idea. I could get my friend who makes the um, red for Ed. I could get him to make some tales of an educated debutante ones like this. I also love a visor. 
I'm still waiting on my Christmas card. Oh my gosh, Melissa, send me your address. The damn Christmas cards. Of course, I hadn't done those either. Use Queensboro and Wilmington. Oh, well, we have a group here. I like to use my little local yokel places. I mean, what is on my nose? Sorry. It's like I... Maybe it's bleeding. Am I bleeding? Mm. It sounds like good stuff, it sounds like. You need a cool logo with a care cover of you. Ooh, nobody wants my picture on their hat. Oh my gosh, Christmas cards. Oh. Kim likes Toad. Well, I could probably send y'all Christmas cards. I guess I could. Tales, the Ted Talks. Ooh, that's a good idea. Looks like a scratch. I know, but where did it come from? Um, carry on. Get a lot done today. Be looking for my uh, soccer story then. I'll write that this morning. Okay? Before I start my work on my talk. Love y'all. Goodbye. Ooh, thanks, Elizabeth.